So, Bound for Glory is this Saturday. It's Impact Wrestling's WrestleMania, their Starcade. I say this every time I do a, rest, a wrestling video about Bound for Glory, but we've had some developments over the last 24 hours or so, because if you recall on the channel, if you're a long-time subscriber, you might be new if you are, bottom right-hand corner, subscribe to Wrestle News 365. But the other day, we did a video saying that we could see some possible surprises at Bound for Glory, and we went through some names that could appear, and it has actually been confirmed by Heath, the former Heath Slater, WWE superstar Heath Slater, that there could be some ex-WWE superstars to appear this Saturday at Bound for Glory. Now, a number of released WWE superstars debuted for Impact at Slammiversary back in July, and fans could see even more ex-WWE superstars show up at Saturday's event at Bound for Glory. Now, it feels like forever, forever, since I believe it was roughly 40 WWE superstars were released back in April due to budget cuts associated due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That was only six months ago. It was all the way back in April. And since then, we've seen them popping up here and there, uh, signing with new companies, whether it is AEW, whether it's Impact Wrestling, whether it's just appearing on the independent scene uh, after their non-day, uh, non-compete, non easy for me to say, 90-day complete clauses started to expire. Now, although not as many places as some people would expect, obviously the pandemic has changed that. We've mostly seen them show up, as I said, either in AEW or Impact or on the occasional independent uh, wrestling show. But a big, a big swarm of ex-WWE superstars debuted in Impact Wrestling back in July at Slammiversary. You had the likes of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson sign with Impact. They're now full-fledged members of the Impact Wrestling roster. We had EC3 and Eric Young return to Impact Wrestling after being released by WWE. We also had Heath Slater, Heath Miller, Heath, whatever you want to call him, make his Impact debut at Slammiversary 2. Uh, so there's a lot of stars that made their return to the company or debuted with the company back in July at Slammiversary, but we could see the same thing Saturday at Bound for Glory if Heath's words are anything to go by. Now Heath will be part of the Call Your Shot gauntlet match whereby the winner gets a championship opportunity of their liking. Of course there's more to it for Heath and Rhino in this match though. If Heath wins he gets a contract with Impact Wrestling because he doesn't have a contract yet but if Heath or Rhino doesn't win Heath will get no more opportunities to participate or wrestle for Impact Wrestling, no more opportunities to earn a contract but in addition to that his tag team partner Rhino will also be fired. But when he recently did an interview, Heath, with Wrestling News Co. And he hinted that we could see, as part of the Call Your Shot gauntlet match, some WWE superstar, ex-WWE superstar surprises at Bound for Glory on Saturday. He said, quote, when discussing ex-WWE superstar showing up, quote, don't be surprised if you see more surprises because there might be some more people heading on over, end quote. So... Uh, opens up the floodgates of speculation. Who are these potential ex-WWE superstars that could be appearing Saturday night at Bound for Glory? Now, as I mentioned, we have done a video previously on the channel speculating on who this could be, but that was more than just ex-WWE superstars. That was former Impact stars like RVD, Aces and Eights, Bully Ray, in addition to some other names. But now we have that field narrowed a little bit. Now we know potentially who could be showing up in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match because we know that potentially some ex-WWE superstars may indeed be showing up at Bound for Glory on Saturday. Now this is really interesting because Heath has spoken about this a while. Heath has mentioned that even superstars under contract with WWE currently, now obviously those stars aren't going to show up Saturday at Bound for Glory, but he has mentioned that he's spoken to numerous WWE superstars that are under contract right now, and they're asking him about Impact Wrestling. They're saying, can you get me in? What's the atmosphere like? Because the reputation for Impact Wrestling is very, very high right now. Everyone knows not only has it got a lot of eyeballs in terms of the public, in terms of people watching their show, but the reputation as well. The reputation is really, really high for Impact Wrestling right now. A lot of people are saying great things about it and it seems like a great place to work. And if you look at their TV tapings, I saw this, uh, this take on social media and I thought this was really interesting that... In a time which you see during the pandemic, you see a lot of uh, a lot of news about WWE's handling, about positive tests, negative tests, testing procedures. Impact Wrestling has just done everything right. 
from a testing procedure, you haven't heard of any outbreaks, you're not hearing about anyone uh, feel the discomfort in performing, not worried about performing, you're not seeing bad storylines, you're seeing quality storylines, everything they seem to be doing right now in Pat Wrestling is just hitting everything. It just, they're doing such a fantastic job and I feel like this momentum is going to continue, quite frankly. It's going to continue as we head in to Bound for Glory on Saturday. So in terms of these in terms of these ex-WWE superstars that could be appearing Saturday, who are we looking at? Well, there's one name I didn't actually mention when I did the video the other day discussing about who could be showing up at Bound for Glory on Saturday, some potential surprises. And I must say, before I get into the names, I do think this is going to happen in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. I don't, I don't think, unless it, it factors into a storyline somehow, I don't think we're going to see any ex-WWE superstars show up in any other match. I don't think we're going to see... I won't do the name because I'll spoil it, but I don't think we're going to see an ex-WWE superstar show up and say the Ken Shamrock Eddie Edwards match. I don't think we're going to see an ex-WWE superstar show up in the main event between Rich Swan and Eric Young. I don't I don't see the the story there that that would be trying to be told. So I just I just don't see that happening. But you never know. You never know. So the first name that could show up an ex-WWE superstar is Curtis Axel. Now, I made a video about Curtis Axel. I believe it was a couple of weeks ago discussing about what could be the situation when it comes to Curtis Axel and Impact Wrestling? Well, the interesting thing about Curtis Axel is that obviously these comments were made by Heath saying that we could see some ex WWE superstars show up at Bound for Glory. But in an interview a couple of weeks prior to this, Heath actually did say that he had spoken to Curtis Axel about potentially coming into Impact Wrestling. He's good friends with Curtis Axel. They were both part of the Social Outcasts together back in WWE. So they're in a faction together. They're also part of the Nexus together. So they've worked together in the past. They're very close. And he said that Curtis Axel is one of his best friends in professional wrestling. At the moment, he was just taking some time out. He was just doing his own thing and he was happy doing his own thing. And in fact, he had tried to convince Curtis Axel to come into Impact Wrestling. So I would say Curtis Axel is a name to look at there. I think Curtis Axel, look, I remember really campaigning for him to get a better push in WWE before. And people are saying, why are you trying to make him like his dad? Why are you trying to say that he's you know, the next Kurt Hennig, blah, blah, blah. And he's not as good as his dad. I felt like Curtis Axel was always a very, really solid worker. I thought he got off on the wrong foot when it came to the whole Michael McGillicuddy thing. I thought that name was terrible. I thought that run in the season two of NXT was awful. But what I will say is I, I felt the name change to Curtis Axel was good. I would have preferred him to be Joe Hennig. I think that's what he would be if he came into Impact Wrestling. Uh, I felt sorry for him because he was put in the position of being a Paul Heyman guy, but that was only to facilitate the Paul Heyman versus CM Punk feud. We didn't know that at the time. We know that now that's unfortunate for him. He was just a pawn in a larger play there. But I do think he has so much to offer. I think when it comes to Impact Wrestling, I think he'd be a fantastic addition to the roster. And I would say this one is a possibility. I think it's a possibility that Curtis Axel could show up purely because his name has been spoken about before. Heath has mentioned his name before. And he's got connections with people such as Heath and the company. So I wouldn't rule that one out for Saturday at Bound for Glory. Now, what about Aiden English? We spoke about Aiden English the other day. We spoke about how... He has mentioned wanting to get back out there. He's mentioned about wanting to get back on the wrestling scene. I know some people in uh, opposition to my thoughts that he could show up said he only wants to work indie shows. We don't know that. We don't know that. I think Aiden English, I think, as I mentioned, people almost forget uh, about the, the two sides of him because you, you almost forget about the side that was in NXT and was a big tag team. Uh, as part of the Vaud villains with Simon Gotch. He he can work. He can work really, really well, and he's a fantastic worker. And then obviously you've got the other side of him, his ability on the mic. He was the hype man, essentially, for Rusev during the Rusev Day angle and Rusev Day gimmick, which just did not get the chance to get over, even though it was astronomically over. And Aiden English was a huge part of that as well. Uh, I think he can offer not only the ring work, not only the promo work, but also you've got the ability behind the mic in the broadcast booth. Aiden English was a commentator for 205 Live and did a fantastic job. He's got a great voice. He's a fantastic commentator. And again, 
no slight to Madison Rain. I think she does a good job on Impact. If it was for me, personally, I would have Don Callis out there every week with Josh Matthews because I think Don Callis is one of the best commentators out there going right now in general. Any company, I'll take Don Callis. But if he's too busy doing his executive vice presidential duties in Impact Wrestling along with Scott Demore, then I think I think Aiden English would be a fantastic addition to the commentary booth. And he's open to doing it all. In recent interviews, he said, look, I'll, I'll wrestle, I'll do promos, I'll do commentary, whatever you want. I just want to get back out there. So again, I think that's a possibility. I absolutely do. Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan. Now, this is an interesting one because... I'm under the impression, for me, that I think Eric Rowan coming to Impact Wrestling is a possibility. Now, when I did the video the other day, I saw a lot of comments of people saying, not a chance, he's going to AEW, he's going to go with Brody Lee, he's going to be part of the Dark Order. And to that, I just say no. I, I just don't... I can understand the thought process of it. I do understand the thought process of it. I understand the, the rationale and the reason why people would think that. My feeling is, when it comes to that, that isn't going to happen... Well, I don't think that should happen because I just think they want to do their own thing. They mentioned that they're very close friends. They do talk very often, but they've always been joined at the hip when it comes to their run in professional wrestling. They were part of the Wyatt family. Then they were part of the Bludgeon Brothers. They've always been a tag team. And even in 2019, during his feud with Roman Reigns, Eric Rowan's feud with Roman Reigns, Brody Lee, Luke Harper came and got involved in that because they're always tied together. Brody Lee's doing his own thing in Impact in AEW right now, rather. He's the leader of the Dark Order. He's standing on his own two feet. The company are very, very happy with the work that he is doing right now in AEW. And I think Eric Rowan, in a few interviews I've seen of him, he's basically said, look, I want to give him the space. I don't want to get in the way of Brody Lee. He's doing fantastic things. And I want to stand on my own two feet too. And I think that's really important. So for me... I think it's a possibility that he comes into Impact Wrestling. And to be honest, if Impact can sign Eric Rowan, that is a massive, massive signing for them. That is a huge deal. Eric Rowan, as I mentioned, only 12 months ago, he's feuding with Roman Reigns and he beat Roman Reigns at, uh, at Clash of Champions for WWE. And obviously the spider, stupid spider gimmick happened and all that terribleness happened. Eric Rowan is a big deal. He can talk, he can work, he's a big guy. There aren't many of those guys out there. He has legitimate star power for me. I think he has fantastic potential, and he can be. I mean, he could be a world champion any, anywhere. And that might be a bold statement to some people. I could see Eric Rowan being an Impact World Champion. I could see Eric Rowan if he went to AEW and he got the right push and the right creative, and he was allowed to be creative. He could be a world champion in AEW. Some of the ideas that that man had for his run in WWE that they didn't go with. I'm telling you, go watch, I think it's an interview with Chris Van Vliet and Eric Rowan talks about the ideas that he pitched to replace that spider gimmick. Instead of having the spider, he wanted to have the world's smallest woman in the cage. It's just, I mean, amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. It would have been phenomenal television. So to get someone of that size, that stature, that ability to talk, to work and have that, you know, up there as well, that's, that's big. That would be massive for impact. And again, I think it's possible. Speaking of a possibility, we mentioned this the other day, an ex-WWE superstar that could show up at Bound for Glory on Saturday, Leo Rush. Now, Leo Rush, if I was going to pick everyone out of this list that I'm reading off right now, I would say Leo Rush, for me, is the person I think is most likely to show up Saturday at Bound for Glory. Now, the reason I say that is because after months of saying, you know what, I might be done when it comes to pro wrestling, and I never felt that was the case for Leo Rush. I always felt that he was always going to come back. I always felt that he wasn't going to retire. I felt that during the pandemic, he was going to do what a lot of people do. Sit it out, reevaluate. He's got a family at home. Uh, he's focusing on his music career as well, which is doing very, very well. I always felt that Leo Rush would come back because he's too talented not to. He's absolutely too talented not to. And you have to uh, look at the climate at the moment as well. You have to look at the climate that there aren't many indie shows that are running at the moment. If this was normal times right now, he would be making the indie circuit without a shadow of a doubt. And he would have numerous options available to him that aren't available right now. But since then, Leah Rush has spoken about wanting to get back into wrestling. He did the Cody Rhodes. He's made a list of guys he wants to work with. And a couple of those names are in Impact Wrestling right now, whether it is Chris Bay or some other names that he put on there as well. I think Leo Rush is a real big possibility. I really do think he is a big possibility to show up 
Saturday night at Bound for Glory. And as I mentioned, if I'm going to pick all the names out of this list that I think is most likely to show up, and maybe is one of the names that Heath is talking about here that say you never know who could show up, I think Leo Rush is one of them. And I spoke about the X Division in the Impact Wrestling recently getting stronger and stronger and getting back to that level that it was in the mid 2000s with AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, Kazarian, etc. Now, will they ever reach that level again? I don't know. But people like Leo Rush, signing people like Leo Rush is how you do it. You build the X Division around them. And I'd love to see a Leo Rush versus Chris Bay feud. I think everyone would want to see that. That could be really, really special. So I think Leo Rush is a possibility to show up on Saturday. Uh, Maria and Mike Bennett, I, I think this one, this is difficult. This is a difficult one, I think, because uh, if you'd have asked me about a week or so ago, I would have said yes. I think it's very likely. I think now, though, that the, the Bennetts are quite tied to the NWA. We know about Mike Bennett and Maria Bennett, Maria Canellis, their relationship with Billy Corgan from the time in Impact Wrestling. I still think that you can hold up Mike Bennett's run in Impact Wrestling, which was only for one year. People forget it was just one year. 2016 to 2017, and he did so much. X Division champion, but the feuds he had, whether it was with Moose, introducing Moose, Eddie Edwards, EC3, Cody and Brandy Rhodes. He did so much. Everything he did in that year meant something. And everyone recalls it. Everyone remembers it. It was such a good run. It got him straight to the main roster in WWE. He got signed to WWE and went straight to SmackDown. He didn't go through NXT. That doesn't happen. That really doesn't happen unless your name's AJ Styles or you've been in the WWE before. So that's how good his run was in Impact Wrestling. Now, as I mentioned, if... You'd have asked me about a week or so ago, will Mike Bennett head to, back to Impact Wrestling? I would have said yes, but it looks like he's more and more tied to the NWA. He is going to, he's been announced to appear on future episodes of Primetime, was it Primetime Live Wrestling, whatever they're calling it, which the NWA are affiliated with. We know that NWA power is returning soon. We don't know when, where, but the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis has said that it is returning soon. We just don't know a time and a place. I think Mike Bennett's going to be heavily involved in that. So could he make a couple appearances? Sure. I just don't know if I see it at this point. Uh, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And finally, a former WWE superstar that is currently a free agent right now, Matt Cardona. We spoke about him the other day. The more that time goes on, I don't know if it's just me convincing myself <laughs> when it comes to this one, but I just think there's something there. I think there is something there when it comes to Matt Cardona and Impact Wrestling. Look, back in July, when Slammiversary was approaching, I said, if Impact can sign Matt Cardona, he can be a world champion. He really can be a world champion in Impact Wrestling, and I still believe that. I still think there is so much Matt Cardona can do in professional wrestling. I think you look at the popularity he had. I know it was in like 2011, and people say, well, that's past, that's over. I don't think so. I think he still does have the goodwill of the people. I still think there is more that he can do, and I think in a company like Impact that isn't as big as AEW and certainly WWE, I think there is more that Matt Cardona can do, and... Look, he's not under contract of anywhere. His deal with AEW was a short-term deal. It was like six appearances, if that. He hasn't re-signed yet with AEW. I think there was a lot of thought that he would eventually re-sign, and he hasn't yet. And look, whilst he's not under contract, if you're Impact Wrestling, make the call. Make the call and to say, look, even if you don't want to tie down to like a year or a two-year deal, do you want to come in for three months? Do you want to just make a shot at Bound for Glory? You know, Brian Myers is currently with the company. Why don't we do something with that? Or, I don't know, you look at the Good Brothers, I think this is a, a good point to make as well. You look at the Good Brothers, Impact Wrestling, I've said to him, look, your Talking Shop podcast, Talking Shop Mania, promote it, do whatever you want. We'll put you on Access TV with the Talking Shop Road to Bound for Glory, whatever it was called. All of that stuff, we'll do it. We'll plug the hell out of your stuff. You can work for New Japan when the opportunity arises. You can do what you want. We just want you on our program. And I think that is interesting to someone like Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. They've got their, was it Major Figure Wrestling podcast? You know that Impact Wrestling would just say, look, if you sign with us, we'll promote the hell out of it. We'll put it on TV. We'll give you specials to talk about wrestling figures. We can even maybe hopefully release some more Impact Wrestling figures and stuff like that. Why not? Why not? So I wouldn't rule that one out. I wouldn't rule that one out. So there is certainly a pool of WWE superstars that could appear Saturday night at Bound for Glory. It's an exciting time. It's always exciting. As I mentioned, I think they will show up in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. But 
Who knows? Who knows? So who do you think is an ex-WWE superstar that could appear Saturday night at Bound for Glory? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys and talking about Impact Wrestling with you. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. Really just help us out here on YouTube, got the rankings and get to people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. We will be doing a live watch along of Bound for Glory on Saturday, so be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out when we go live on Saturday night. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.